Hello everyone, this is Nanda Kumaran with another video. So in this video, we are going to set up our local machine to work with Kafka. So I'm not going to show you the classical way of setting up. I'm going to use Docker uh, to run Kafka locally. So this is how you are going to work with Kafka in an enterprise. Uh, so also in the later or uh, next video, I'm going to show you how to set up Kafka in AWS EC2 instance. So if that sound interesting, uh, make sure you leave a like so that uh, this video will reach out more and the channel will grow. Also make sure to subscribe to the channel so that you are not going to miss any of the upcoming videos. Uh, without further ado, let's dive into the setup right now. So before moving further, I need to tell you this is the official repository for our uh, Kafka series. Here you can find all the resources that are related to the series. Up till now, it will ha it is having Docker setup and the commands are uh, file. We'll dig into this uh, in the later part of this video. Before moving further, you need to download things uh, before uh, setting up Docker. So you need to have Apache Kafka. Uh, you can have any of these binaries. There are a lot of video tutorials and articles out there to set up according to your uh, home Windows or Mac machines. So just go and follow that. I'm not going to repeat those things here. And you need uh, any Java development kit. Either it can be OpenJDK or Java SE. So you need something, uh, some Java platform to run those uh, Kafka binaries. Then obviously you need Docker uh, to run this uh, uh, Docker Compose file. So if you have all these three, you, can, you are good to go with the for next part of this video. So I'm going to use this uh, image. Um, uh, it is uh, by uh, Bitnami by VMware. So if we scroll a bit, uh, you can find some configuration uh, docs. So these are the configuration that are necessary for uh, running Kafka using Zookeeper or Keraft. So as you can see in these things, uh, you can find Zookeeper configuration as well as Keraft configuration. We are just going to ignore the Zookeeper one and going to focus on the Keraft one. So if someone is visiting this uh, and wondering why we are uh, skipping Zookeeper and working with Keraft. Uh, the KIP833 is the reason. So to give a summary, KIP means Kafka Improvement Pro uh, Proposals. In that proposal, from the 3.5 version onwards, uh, the Zookeeper mode will be deprecated as per the KIP. And also from the fourth version, the KRAF mode only be supported so that we are not going to uh, set up um, Zookeeper rather we are going go moving to the KRAF uh, things and also yeah, I need to introduce uh, the uh, some of the documentation that uh, you need to know about KRAF there are uh, three configuration that you need to be aware of uh, while working with KRAF one is process roles uh, a process role is IAM kind of things uh, that uh, you are denoting a server or Kafka or uh, you are denoting Kafka uh, that uh, whether it need to be act as a broker or controller or uh, be in a combined mode. So this is what the process role means. Uh, let me uh, make it clear. So if the process role is set up to broker, uh, the server will act as a broker, which will um, uh, write the thing, which will read the topic. If the process role is set to a controller, this will act as a controller which means uh, it will go into quoting and making uh, the meta properties up. so if it is uh, set as broker as well as controller as in, as you can uh, imagine now it, it will act in both of the uh, state so if there is nothing described means uh, it will it will assume that it is in the zookeeper mode these are the different thing you need to know also it is not recommended to use broker and controller together in a combined server mode in the production environment so try to avoid these uh, thing and keep it in mind that a broker as well as uh, controller as in combined mode is not suitable for the production environment so next if you scroll down there is something called controllers so the one thing that you need to know is co controller core motors these are the voters are uh, considered an election. These three are the voters that are going to vote and uh, going to elect a leader. So it, the leader will have the metadata partitions. So the you need to specify who are all the voters for the things. So once Kafka server is uh, denoted as a controller, it is ready for the um, voting process. Uh, you need to define in such way. The ID goes first at 
the host uh, name which in in our case it's local host in some other case uh, it will be an ip address and then the colon comes the port number so this is how the core controller quorum votos will goes yeah, we uh, don't worry much we will set all these things while we set up our docker environment and also there is one thing called storage tools the way uh, the care of work means uh, you need to have an uh, random uuid generated uh, so that uh, the cluster id needs to be provided by us so first we need to uh, create a random uuid and then you need to format uh, the storage based upon the uuid uh, in our case we need to only generate a random uuid and provide it to the uh, uh, container so that uh, the container will uh, itself uh, format the storage for us so if you are clear with these three concepts uh, we'll move on so as you are aware of the three properties and uh, all the necessary things that you need to have i assume you are having all the things set up uh, so first uh, we'll create a directory and then inside the directory uh, let me just open the vs code the first thing you need to do is you need to create a docker compose file the first thing you need to do here is you need to specify what is the image that you are gonna use and what is the container name and which is the port gonna be open to the host so these are the things you need to do first so if you go to the repository you can find the docker setup.md as you can see it have the step by step process first uh, copy paste uh, first compartment or uh, the first set of codes so it will have the image that you need to have and also it will have the container name and it will have the ports associated with the container so then you need to have the configurations so just uh, grab these configurations just uh, align it so inside the configuration as you can see we are going to enable the kref mode so we are uh, providing yes for the kref mode and we are declaring this kafka server as broker and controller uh, as a quick note don't uh, specify this in uh, in a uh, production environment uh, these four lines are just uh, the protocol that we are going to use the advertised listeners that uh, we are going to uh, have for this uh, server and also what are the uh, listeners that in general the kafkas have and what are the controller listeners names of. so these are some uh, mandatory stuffs to work with if you are having some two to three kafka server means just uh, alter uh, alter the 9092 host to 9093 as well as the controller host um, 218142 2182 so by this way you will have a uh, series of uh, kafka servers then uh, comes the broker id you will have the broker id as one two three you can also have the broker id as 101 or 102 it is based on the requirements so then comes the quorum waters so this is what uh, we have discussed in the three um, main tools for care after as you can see one is the node id uh, the kafka uh, node id is specified as one for this kafka server so one at the host which in our case it is a local host so one uh, 127.0.0.1 and also the port number is what the controller port number so this is how the controller quorum motor uh, will be if you have multiple uh, kafka server means you need to specify the node id first which means two at the local host uh, colon uh, then uh, controller port number which means in our case uh, if we have another thing means 2182 this is how the kafka co controller quorum motors will be then we need to provide the cluster id as we have discussed you need to generate one and you need to provide it to the container so this is how the kafka uh, setup and the docker environment uh, setup will be then we need to bind this uh, container with an uh, with a st local storage so that uh, the data will be persistent and we can use this data for our later uh, part of this video so uh, to do that uh, you can go and grab this uh, last set of uh, compartment so just paste it here so let's spin up our uh, do docker compose so as you can see it is initializing the kafka 
so now the kafka is initialized as you can see in the right it is having a new folder with the config as well as data for example if you need a replication factor of 2 all over your kafka server means you can provide that here uh, we will see how we can do that in the later part of the series but for now just keep in mind configuration uh, config is somewhat uh, the configuration files goes in the data file have all the data related to the running container as you can see in the meta.properties the node id is 1 which means uh, we have provided the node id 1 and also the cluster id which we have provided uh, right there so the meta.property will have the properties that the kafka server have it also it will have a lot of uh, checkpoints uh, so that it will keep track of each and every offsets up so uh, now we know how the folder structure is let's see how we can uh, get that folder so if we have if you have the docker extension in the vs code uh, let me close these things to have the clear view so in that uh, you can see there is a uh, the files inside that in you can go inside the file and you can see the bitnami folder here there inside the bitnami you have kafka and inside kafka there is config and data this is how I figured out the, the data and the config resides in the uh, in this folder. You can also do this in uh, this way also. You can attach a cell and you can see uh, using ls and uh, cd, uh, this uh, combination of ls and cd command. It is your wish to use uh, any of these methods. So now as the Kafka is running, you need, uh, we can um, quickly do some of the commands. Uh, let me introduce uh, two simple commands. Let's create our first topic uh, uh, in this uh, running Kafka Kafka server. So you need to specify the topic name. As this is a first topic, let's describe it as a first topic. So as you can see now the first topic is created also there is a new folder inside the data which recites all the necessary properties and uh, metadata for our uh, first topic we'll dig more into this uh, in the later part of the series so in the, for now uh, if uh, i do another uh, command let's say we'll list the topic as you can see there is uh, only one topic uh, right here which is first topic this is how the, the docker compose uh, file works and uh, this is how you can bind these things uh, generally you have created a docker compose file and just uh, by running docker compose uh, docker compose app uh, you are running a kafka server uh, in, in your local machine so in the next video or in some uh, later point uh, I will show you how to set up uh, in AWS EC2 instance. Uh, that's it for today, guys. Uh, so I hope you are enjoying the series and you have enjoyed the setup part. So if you if it's so, just give a like to the uh, to this video so that it will get some tractions and make sure to subscribe to the channel. So I will see you in the next video.